Israeli forces have confirmed that Yaha Sinwar, the leader of Hamas and the mastermind behind the brutal attacks of October 7th, has been killed in Rafah. He was found on the second floor of a building after an intense firefight between militants and a regular IDF unit that was supported by armor, which just happened to be there. It wasn't a targeted strike or a commando operation. The soldiers didn't even realize who they had encountered until DNA results came back the next day, matching Sinwar's records from his time in an Israeli prison. In his final moments, Sinwar didn't see a glorious Palestinian state stretching to the Jordan River. He didn't see minarets made for the one true God. He didn't see the fulfillment of his dream of pushing the Jews into the sea. Instead, he looked out over a landscape of rubble and fire and dust, a ruin of his own making. You know, I, uh, I studied Islam and Arabic during my time in Egypt and Iraq, and I'm reminded of a story by Omar ibn al-Khattab, the father-in-law of the Prophet Muhammad. In 1628, the Prophet Muhammad set out to perform a pilgrimage to Mecca, but the uh, Quraysh tribe who uh, controlled the city denied him entry. So he and his followers uh, camped out outside the city in a little village called al Hudabaya. Tensions were high, and when the Prophet sent an emissary into Mecca to negotiate terms of entry, the emissary stayed longer than expected, and fearing the worst, Muhammad's followers gathered under an ancient tree and pledged to avenge the emissary's death should it come to that. Years later, after the uh, Quraysh had made peace with the Muslims, Omar ibn al-Khattab heard that some people had begun to view the tree at al hudabiya as sacred. In his wisdom, Omar ibn al-Khattab ordered the tree to be cut down to prevent it from becoming a false idol. When you proclaim that there is no God but God, yet you worship at an altar of rubble and fire and dust, you too will be cut down, just like the tree of al you know, The Quran in Al-Baqarah uh, 148 reminds us, Everyone turns to their own direction of prayer, so compete with one another in doing good wherever you are. Allah will bring you all together for judgment. Surely Allah is the most capable of everything. So I ask you to race one another in doing good. Prime Minister Netanyahu has extended a hand. If you lay down your arms and return the hostages, you will be granted amnesty. And I hope you listen. I want you to live. I want you to see your children grow, to see a free and democratic Gaza to witness peace. They say the pen is mightier than the sword, and this is especially true when the pen can prevent the need for a thousand more swords. This is your chance to end a war that displeases the God we share. This video is uh, shared under Creative Commons. Feel free to copy it and translate it. And thank you for watching.